Tower Mina nestled on the eastern coast of Sicily is often regarded as a picturesque jewel in the Mediterranean with its stunning panoramic views, historical charm, and rich cultural heritage. However, as captivating as it might seem at first glance, this idyllic town has earned the reputation among some travelers as being a tourist trap. Was it a trap for us? Well, we loved it, even if it was. The best way I can describe driving in Taormina, well, I didn't actually drive, my husband did all the driving. Thanks, Francesco. Okay, let's talk about the millions of toll booths in Taormina. So, as we were going there around the coast, getting to Tower Mina, there was just one toll after another. They weren't that expensive, they were only like a euro or two, but they kept coming up on the road, so you had to put one or two coins inside the toll booth, and then a lot of times they'd give you a ticket, and you can't lose the ticket, because if you lose it, there's no way to pay the tolls. In fact, that happened to us once. I didn't know that we had to keep the ticket. Um, I thought we just kind of paid the euros and that's how much it was, like a flat rate. But what happened was luckily there was someone working by one of the toll booths and she realized that we were foreigners and probably didn't realize what we were doing with the toll booth. So she allowed us to just pay the toll without having the ticket. We literally got saved at that moment. Otherwise we would have had to probably pay a large fine for losing a little ticket. The second thing you need to know about driving in Taormina is that there are really long tunnels and this is all around Sicily, like around the perimeter. It's not just around Taormina, but you want to get some really good sunglasses because what happens is you're going in these underground tunnels that keep going under mountains and then you come out and it's really bright. So you're going bright, dark, bright, dark. You want to get some glasses with some type of reflector on it before you go so that way you're not blindsided once you get in and out of the tunnels. The streets in Taormina were so cute. So we're driving down them and they're really narrow. Um, it's amazing that big cars can even get through them. We were in like a SUV <laughs> trying to get around these narrow roads that were overlooking the ocean and then we'd go um, up and down these mountains here there's a bus here and it was actually over its lane and we side swiped the greenery a little bit uh, just trying to get by the bus almost hit us would we do it again absolutely it was worth having a car in tower mina the narrow and winding streets would just take your breath away. There was a bit of traffic and congestion. That's maybe why people said it's like a tourist trap. Um, parking for us wasn't a big deal because we just went to our hotel and they had valet parking there. We absolutely loved our hotel. We'll talk about it a little bit later too. We used a combination of Apple and Google Maps to get around and it worked out great for us. We found Apple Maps to sometimes be more reliable in some areas and Google Maps to be reliable in other areas. I'd recommend downloading both on your phone if you plan to go to Taormina. But navigation was easy around there because the GPS for Apple Maps and Google Maps worked really well. We didn't have any trouble trying to get around. Italians are known for their little bit of crazy driving, but what's more crazy about it is that because everyone's a tourist there, they're not really good at driving on those roads. <laughs> so make sure if you rent a car, you're looking out, not more for the people who live there, but for the other tourists, because they might not be great drivers. They could be coming from around the world, and everyone has their own driving rules when you're driving with people around the world. My other recommendation would be to get a car with great gas mileage because gas was about $7.84 a gallon. The other thing that you can do is get a credit card with cash for back rewards. So if you're getting 4% cash back and you have about a $50 tank, that creates huge savings for when you get back home. We stayed at the Three Star Hotel Continental in Taormina. And let me tell you, for a three star in Italy, this hotel was amazing. I would probably stay there every time I went back to Taormina. It's really close to the main area, 
so you can get to the main shopping street just by going down like a little hill and in fact there's like a shortcut right behind the hotel to get there and then the other thing is this hotel has valet parking so all you have to do is bring your car up to the front of the hotel where you check in and they take your bags and take your car keys take everything and bring it to your hotel for you so you really don't have to do much it's pretty much for full service as soon as you arrive this is our hotel room in Taormina it's <laughs> cool we have a very modern bathroom it has plugs all over the place and the shower it has mood lighting so it changes colors which is really cool they have a bathroom and a divide this is the hotel continental and that bed is comfortable we tried it out and they have all these plugs you have let's see usb plugs in there and some of course a telephone if you need it nice size bed big tv there's a mini bar and it has stuff in it. They came with fresh fruit in the room when we came in, um, just for you to eat. There's some snacks and there's some drinks and stuff in the mini bar. You do have to pay for them, but they're only like a dollar fifty or something each. So they're pretty cheap. Um, and then the room has a beautiful balcony over here. Hi, that's my Hello. Marito. Ciao. And. This is Hotel Continental, Tower Mina, easy to get to. They had parking, um, they help you park your car, which is kind of nice. Okay, bye guys, see you later. That fish serve from 7.30 is definitely the highlight of the hotel, so do not miss it. In the lobby, they have a full breakfast, but what's really amazing is the spectacular views. There are views of the ocean that you can see over the balcony, and if you turn around, you can see even Mount Etna and views of towns that are higher up. Mount Etna is Europe's largest active volcano. It's awe-inspiring. This is the town area in Tower Mina. Let's see what's over here. We'll take a look. Just walking around the hotel right now. And lots of sunshine. Over here. Now we're gonna see what the view looks like. Over here. And, oh, this looks like it's the town. You can see the ocean from here and all the different areas. It's a nice uh, rooftop on top of here. Ciao, Francesco. Ciao. This is the view from the other side. Over when we're looking over the balcony at the views, yeah, um, it was the first sight of seeing Tower Mina and the and ocean area. behind it. Tower Mina is located on the Ionian Sea, and if you look behind you, once again, you can see the mountain towns way up inside the mountains beyond Tower Mina. A lot of people going to Tower Mina think it's like a beach town and they're going to be ending up at beach resorts, but actually Tower Mina is situated way up in the mountain and you just have views of the hotel. ocean. Breakfast was free because it was included in the room. We were kind of surprised with that. They had such an abundance of food for breakfast that you could make sandwiches, you could have pastries, you had a toaster oven. But the really best part about it was all the fruits and fruit drinks, fruit salads, bananas, 
they had um, kind of aperitivo like appetizers that you could even have for breakfast at the rooftop restaurant. The rooftop restaurant was indoors so you didn't have to worry about bugs or anything else like that. One of the highlights around Tower Mina was just seeing the views from different parts of the city. You could see the ocean which was blue with all the boats sailing and staying still in them. We took some photos near the areas that had good views while we were there. The sunshine was spectacular. We were able to soak up lots of sun. At nighttime seeing the same views of the ocean with the boats lit up was absolutely magical. While it might look like a tourist trap, Tower Mina is actually a wonderful place to go if you like to walk on the streets with other people, eat gelato and ice cream. You can also find ice cream flavors that don't have dairy in it called granita. Eat some Italian food while looking at the sea over the balconies in the city and just enjoy the slow life that Tower Mina brings to you. I learned the town right below Tower Mina is called Giardini Noxus. It's a great beach town. The Italian word for taking a walk is a passeggiata, and we love doing that. One of our favorite things to do when we go to a new town is just to walk around and absorb the beauty of the place and see what there is to do around the area. We took a walk on the street with Francesco's parents too and saw tons of little shops and gelato shops. There were places to get cannolis everywhere. We even found the most narrow alley in all of Tower Mina. It was really tiny. When you go to Tower Mina, bring some great walking shoes. We decided to take Francesco's parents down the stairs the long way, not the shortcut behind the hotel, to make sure that they got a great walk before going to dinner. And then they could eat their dinner and have a walk afterwards. Passeggiata, passeggiata, passeggiata. Lots of walks in Italy. During our walk to dinner, we passed a lot of cats all around the city. Let's see how many we have. We have one, two, going under the car, and then we have three behind the bushes. Let's see if it jumps out. Whoop, oh, it did. Then we have four back on the staircase. Four cats right in one area. They're kind of fun to look at the cats hopping around everywhere. Right behind the Hotel Tower Mina, there is actually a gate, which is kind of funny because we didn't realize that this went back to our hotel. We even asked people, we're like, is that a shortcut to go back to the hotel? And no one would tell us that that was the shortcut to our hotel. So what we did is we took Francesco's parents and walked all the way around to the front of the hotel, up some extra flights of stairs, which I'm sure they were really happy about because it made them sleep and not really want to go out the next day because of all the extra stairs. The city was just cute to walk around. It was neat to see a village that was owned by so many different cultures over time and made out of stone. It almost felt like you're on a college campus or an area where everything was packed and close together, but yet you can walk around and see the sights while you're going around. We also passed some shrines on this road. This shot was of the most crazy intersection in Tower Mina. There was just cars coming up a mountain and people walking everywhere. It was kind of the start of the pedestrian street in the main area of the town. We used our favorite app while we were there called Happy Cow to find what vegan options there were in the restaurants around us. So as walking down the street, we knew exactly where we wanted to go. The cathedral that we found on the street, it's supposed to be the most popular cathedral in Tower Mina. There were also some piazzas or squares where you can walk around and see more people. 
It's impossible to talk about Taormina without talking about the food because it's the highlight of any place that we can go. One of the things that we love to do, as we just mentioned, is use the Happy Cow app to find restaurants beforehand to see where we want to go. We can sort it by options that are most popular with vegan options, vegetarian options, what is labeled, what is not labeled, and what people recommend to see. We went to a place we loved called Street Food for street food. It's Sicilian food with um, vegan options labeled so we knew what we could eat and what we couldn't eat and we were able to make some educated decisions. We loved something called arancini. Every area of Sicily has a different way of saying arancini or arancine um, depending where you're from. Sometimes it's feminine, sometimes it's masculine. Our restaurant was right near the crowded street where everyone liked to go walk in the evening. Here we took some pictures at the restaurant before we ate and we were waiting for our dinner for a long time. That's one of the things about Taormina is don't go in a hurry. Wherever you go, remember everything is slowed down to about half the rate as you might be anywhere else in the world. But we had a delicious pasta. I got one with pistachios in it and Francesco got one with tomato in it. At the restaurant, we learned that they make their own pastas there. So they're actually, instead of pasta, um, it seems like it's thick, round, skinny noodles. The next restaurant we went to without Francesco's parents because we still had an appetite was called Rose Marino in Taormina. We also found this one on Happy Cow and they had some really interesting, well-presented dishes, unfortunately. By the end of the meal, we were too full to eat the rest of it. So we took it home and had it in the hotel later. Overall, we loved our trip to Taormina and it wasn't too touristy and we loved the views, the food, the walking and the driving. We hope to see you soon in the next leg of our journey in Mount Etna. See you later.